Hey everyone, it's uh, Joe and Isaiah here today from The Automator. And today we're gonna to discuss a little bit more about how to identify unique IDs for your elements in the UI automation approach. Right, that's right, because uh, we got a question recently regarding that and um, it, it seemed like he was saying like, well, the, the ID that I'm having is not being remembered and it goes away and it's different every time. So I want to kind of like explain what might be going on and if he is actually doing what I think he's doing, we try to kind of like help him also speed up whatever he's doing because it looks like he's doing a specific process that I, I was kind of like, why are you doing that? Right. So, well, hold on. The other thing I want to mention was if you stick around to the end, you can learn some great tips for speeding up your UI automation code. And also, you know, first off, if you're enjoying these videos and you want to hear more of them, please like and tell us to make more because, you know, we kind of go off what you guys want to hear. So please comment yeah. here and say you like it. And make more. All right. There you go. So in general, um, I'm going to take a, a few examples so that you uh, see the point that I'm trying to make. So first of all, we mentioned briefly that one of the better approaches is to find the automation ID, which looks like a very stable thing. And and he said like, no, it's, it, it changes. That might not be, maybe you're looking at something else because for example, and basically the name itself suggests that it's an identifier. So it should not change that much. Um, name, for example, might change. Localized control type changes because probably in Spanish it might be something else and something like that. But if you're looking at, say, for example, if I put my mouse in here, let me just put my mouse in there, you will notice that it says automation ID and it says num8 button. That shouldn't actually kind of like change regardless of whether I close the program and reopen it. If I open calculator again, when I go ahead and put my mouse on top of that, it should still say the same thing because it's an identifier. Now, I have to let you know, this is not something that um, is a 100% assurance, okay? Because all of the values that are there are set by people. So people might make mistakes, people, or they might follow some patterns that you're not used to. So for example, and this is a very uh, one that you can check for yourself, you can open here the Explorer window, and you will notice that if you put your mouse on top of any name, the automation ID says something very generic. It's a system item name display. And if you put that on top of another one, it will say exactly the same. Sure. I, and I think part of this is because that's not actually part of the program, right? That's that's not a button on the program you're clicking. It is, not. It is actually something right. that gets loaded yeah. automatically yeah. because it would read the contents of that folder and automatically display something, different names on it. So again, as I mentioned, it is not like you're going to see it and you're going to say, oh, that's an ID. That's not how it is. You have to be kind of like a little bit critical critical about it and see well that looks like a generic name i probably will not be able to use that by itself because that's the other thing you can make something identifiable by list by joining different things together so for example i could use the automation id and if you go down here you will notice that there's something called patterns now the patterns is a little bit more of a complex topic but just know that patterns are properties of something. And the pattern, one of the patterns is the value pattern. And the value tells you text that is being displayed. And in this case, when my mouse is over that one, the value of that item name display is the readme.md. So if I put it in another one here, you will notice that the value for this one changed. And, and what's awesome, because we, we know this from working with Windows, right? You can't have the same file name for a file in the same folder, right? right. So no, it no, actually becomes a unique ID. Yeah. It becomes a unique ID in this particular sense. And again, in this case, if you're trying to um, uh, uh, automate Windows Explorer, what you're really doing is actually going into a folder and listing the files that are there. In this case, your automation is going to involve looping through all the automations IDs that are like that and getting the values for each of them. And when you get the value that you're looking for, then go ahead and do something. That is already automating that, right? <laughs> so, Which actually, I would first take a step back, and this is what we always say when we do our consultations, right, Isaiah, is, is look, 
if someone came to us and said we wanted to automate, you know, Windows Explorer, we're trying to this, we'd say, well, why don't you just use Auto Hotkey and directly interact with the the files in the, the file, folder and get those stuff right there? The so for power, right? <laughs> so I just want to take a step back and say, look, this UI automation approach is pretty amazing. However, there's often there's other ways that are actually better, right? It's just um, this is one of the key points in here. UI automation is not the end all be all, right? So it's not like this is the way that you're going to automate from now on. It just so happens that it might be really complex. And really well, and for some newer programs, especially that have controls that you, we can't peek inside without a hotkey, it becomes amazing, right? Right. It's just um, it's something. Not for that, everything, right? Right. So uh, the only point about this is uh, whenever you're trying to get an ID, okay. Automation ID is usually my go-to, but notice that it's not 100% assured that it is an ID. Now, it doesn't change. If I close uh, Explorer and open it again, the ID for that type of item is always going to be the same. That doesn't change, even if I close it and reopen. And I could do the same, for example, check this out. If I open Notepad and I open it twice, so now I open Notepad, let me see, two times, right? Now, if I put my mouse in here, you will notice that the automation ID for the text controller here is number 15. Mm -hmm. If I go to the other one, it is also 15. Sure, right. Because it is an ID about that type of controller. Right, that element within the program. Right, exactly. So if you want to discern the two, you will have to get the handle of this one right. and the handle of that one, and the automation ID becomes that one for... I, I think of them as like the path, right? Like you right. get the, the parent, um, sorry, the handle as the reference to the, the thing you're controlling and then, right. you know, you're getting the element in it. But we have seen so many examples of uh, programs that do not have automation ID, right? Yeah. So right. that you just get the name, for example. Right. So again, this is just uh, the uh, UI automation. It's just a hidden layer for programs that we could tap into to try to automate them if other things fail. So I would go with normal automation if I can. I would use loop through files if I'm trying to uh, find the file or do whatever. If that doesn't work, then I would try something else. And um, UI accessibility is just one more tool in your arsenal. Now let's go to the point that you were making. Like, hey, how can we speed up the thing? Now. I don't know if you noticed that there is this function that we were referring to that is the dump all function, which allows us to go ahead and run the script and it would give us, for example, a message box or something that would list all the available uh, or visible controls at that moment um, that we could access with the UI automation tool. Now, uh, depending on the program, if I use Photoshop, for example, and I try to do a dump all on it, um, it will have so many yeah, sure. things going on that it would take time to load. Now, what I want to let you know is that this is not a tool that you're going to be using every single time your script is running. You use it the first time, you try to get something that allows you to automate that, either the name, which is very common, or the path, which is also very common, or um, by using a tool, how I'm doing, I don't even use the dump all function. I just go ahead and use the tool, find the information about the control that I'm actually looking for, and that's it. But after I get the information, then I don't use that function anymore. I just go ahead and comment it out because I already know what right. I'm looking for. In this case, um, the yeah, there's how no I one. got that was the first, uh, find first by type, and I got the document type. I got that from the message box because the message box, the first one here up top says that the localized control type is document. Well, I got that. That's it. After that, I don't need that function at all. And the next time that I comment it out, I don't need that that overhead of loading all the control. And, and Isaiah, let me jump in here because I, I think I have a good way to explain this. First off, these tools, which you were say, alluding to, is they're discovery tools, right? right? The really important part, and this is the part you just kind of alluded to, they, the paths that were, you know, the unique elements that we're identifying, think of it as like also with the browser, and we use, the, let's say, several class names combined, or, or, you know, jumping to an ID in the class, right, and that kind of path. That all already exists in your program. AutoHockey yeah. with this, we're, we're not building that, and then we're just displaying it so we can easily see it in the, the tools, right? 
But after you've got that ID, just think about your web scraping type of thing, right? You don't go always use your discovery tool to go list everything and then got to see what's there. You know the path, right? You just access that path. And that's where some people, I think, are building loops to go over every time and generate this whole list of everything and then go get it. Um, and it's like, you know what, often that you might think it's needed because in this case, there was no unique automation ID, right? right. Well, there's yeah, other that's... ways to find, you know, to, to limit your search, to reduce it down right. and say, hey, how do you find it? Basically, you know, you just nail, you just hit the nail in there. It is, if your ID, the one that you were looking for, is not stable enough, right? Because it moves, it changes or whatever, then Which does happen, happen, right? We know it does. It does it happen. happen. Then you will have to build your own ID. You have to filter the information in a way that helps you by using the and and or operands because you can right. you can join things together. Like I need control type button and that it has the name, whatever name it is. Or if it is a dialogue, for example, if it is a dialogue, is dialogue true? And the type or has keyboard right. focus true, and that the name is whatever. So you can build your own uniqueness to it if you cannot find it. Um, yeah, and, and thankfully, when you do stuff like that, it it's very fast, right? It may seem like, hey, I'm adding four different things. Oh my word! It is so fast when you actually access it that way. It's crazy. Yeah, it is. It is. And actually, just so you know, here at the top, for example you might see that you have three buttons, right? So you have the minimize, maximize, and close button. Um, you can look through this whole thing right there in a matter of seconds, a little milliseconds. Right. And yeah. you can just simply say um, from, from the, the get elements by, instead of find only one, you just say find all that are buttons for example. And when you look through them, you get the name of them. So let's get the name. And it's the name minimized right. later. Right. And here's the thing. Once you get it the first time, those buttons are not in changing location. So you can use the, uh, the index of it as an identifier. So you just get the get all the buttons and the number two is always going to be right. maximized in this particular instance. Right. It is going to happen the same with these buttons down here. When they're created, if you look for all, let me see, it says localized control type, you say button, you find all by type, you know, find all by type button. And when it loops through them, you can get the name that you want. In this case, the name is seven. And once you get the name, you save that index. You say, oh, it was the button number 25. I assure you, every time the GUI is created, it's going to be button 25. So um, that's another way of identifying. Yeah. And that was my point earlier about the Explorer example, where those files aren't part of the program. Those do change, right? Because it's just a list of stuff and right. depending what's in there. So that one's going to be a little trickier than what we're talking about here. Uh, the other thing that um, I was going to say was, when we build Automate My Task to search for things, uh, Maestro realized, like, well, this is kind of slow. I have three desktops and they're big. Oh, well, what if there's a class under where my image is? What if we only search in those classes? And that is one way that we really crazily sped up what we're doing, because instead of searching everywhere, we only search in areas that have that class, right? Yeah. And that's kind of what you're doing here is when you say, give me just the, hey, I want to look for the buttons. Now on the buttons, just give me these, and you've you've minimized it from this right. to this little bit, and you're looking in there, right? And it's that is it's that really is fast. that is one of, one of the things because if you go ahead and do a dump all in, um, and for example, when we were looking at the other example here, so if I do a dump all and I get a message box like this, notice that some of them are scroll bars, some of them are right. documents. If I just list the buttons one. Right. It's not going to list so many stuff. It's just going to list a few of them. Right. And notice that here, you see this 3.2, which is the button for minimize. If I run the script again, so if I run the script again, it will still be at 3.2. It is always going to be that. It is because it is an index. So that means that if I got all the buttons, only the buttons, and I don't care about anything else, 
and right. get the index of that button, even if it doesn't have a name, even if it doesn't have an automation ID, even if it doesn't have anything. Just by the position of the button, I could go ahead and automate it in a very reliable way. Yeah. And and correct me if I, you think I'm wrong here. Um, I think I'm right. Generally speaking, this would run just fine on my computer as well. Now, yeah. if there's an update to Notepad and you get an update and, and I don't have it, there's a possibility. I'm not saying it's likely. I'm just saying there is a possibility that maybe they added something somewhere and, and the, the shifting location. Uh, yeah. Shifted. However, however, for once you've done it on your program, on your computer, unless you do that update, like you said, you're golden, right? Like it's, right. it's if someone else was running the same version, same software, you should be now, fine as well. The good thing about that is that most of the programs, especially older programs, they um, are very not careful. Of, yeah, yeah, they're very careful yeah. of moving stuff around well, because whenever move, right. whenever they move stuff, their whole program breaks. Right, so, right. <laughs> yeah. They might not want to do well, those changes that often. And even then, they might do it kind of like an ID does and have they have it nested, right? With these one, twos, and threes, there are sub-levels to those, right? So that's how changing something at 1.2 doesn't necessarily, if you added a 1.1.3, it wouldn't shift everything from two below, right? Yes. Because there are different hierarchies, yeah. and they are actually separate from one another. But I guess, like, for now, I, I think this is a very good uh, point of, First, find your IDs. If you can find it, if they are not there, then create it yourself because there are ways of kind of like identifying controls by position, by name, by, by anything, by a combination of things. Yeah, and even if you can't find a unique one, you can minimize what you're looping across to go look at the values exactly. to then create an index, which really shouldn't change. Right. I'd love if you guys have any thoughts on this of what you know, what do you guys use for an ID if you want to write it here, if you found anything? Yeah, that exactly. What is, what is something that you have actually seen working regularly, no. right? But um, again, each program is different. And when you're doing automation, then right. you will have to pick the right tool for it. Yes. Sometimes this will save you a lot of time. Sometimes it's going to make you spend way too much time on it. Well, we were looking earlier at Skype and could we peek inside it? Yes, we could. Wait, yeah, yeah wait. Okay. It was, it was getting to be problem. I said, you know what? Hey, for the purpose of what our client needs, we, we can just create a, a silly, stupid approach. And it was, right. we did it, what, about 30 minutes. I was like, yeah, oh, it was already working. For now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I was going to say also, if you were automating something like in Excel or MS Word, it has calm. Like, I would not in any way use the UI automation approach when I have calm available to me. That is right. And again, all of those things, it is just based on what you need at that point. If you do not have other tools available, I would definitely recommend UI automation. And if you already right. have experience with it, then you know what you're looking for. Right. <laughs> you know, so there you go. That's, a, that's where I would actually kind of like let it um, answer the question. Yeah, awesome. Hope that helps. Thanks, guys. Cheers.